So we headed out on a Friday morning. Didn't really think about traffic in Atlanta on Friday morning, but we were going the right direction. Heading to the Mayberry Meetup in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Hometown of Andy Griffith. We got to the Mayberry Motor Inn in the afternoon and suddenly found ourselves immersed in a world that we weren't really quite ready to be immersed in, to be honest. So we were hanging out with about 150 people who love the Andy Griffith Show. Watching Andy Griffith episodes at night in the little area outside of the inn and doing all things Mayberry and Mount Airy. This is a little mock-up with Wally's service station, the Darlin's truck, Foley's grocery store, and the Mayberry Jail. Kind of a cool place to go. Oh, don't forget the Mayberry Hotel. Can't forget the Mayberry Hotel. Or Fred's radio and TV repair. These are all important things in the world of Mayberry. Here you are, you almost feel like you're there, waiting for Otis to come walk in and let himself in, using that key into this cell to spend the night, sleep off another drunk. There's Aunt B's pickles, gotta learn to love them. And then there's all these cool old 60s things. The show ran from 1960 to 1968, 249 episodes of hometown, homespun, old-fashioned, television and don't forget the old cool Fords. So I'm um, outside of the Mayberry mock-up as I uh, continue to be indoctrinated into the cult of Mayberry. It's really a uh, fascinating weekend. Can't wait to tell the whole story. Stay tuned. We went to the Andy Griffith Museum, which was actually really well done. I learned a lot of cool stuff about Andy Griffith. Things that I didn't know. Things like, he started out as a stand-up comedian. He was a Grammy Award-winning musician. And he made a lot of movies before he ever went into TV. And of course, he's everyone's beloved Sheriff Taylor. Even though apparently Barney ran for sheriff at one point in time. I, I don't remember that episode. In downtown Mount Airy, they have the Snappy Lunch and Floyd's Barbershop. Establishments that have actually been there for a very long time. Andy Taylor, or Andy Griffith, would have sat in this barbershop when he was a kid to get his hair cut. Pretty cool. Other than that, it's a lot of t-shirt shops and stuff. This Coca-Cola sign dates back to 1905 in the exact same form that it's in there. It's actually a building that was torn down and they found it. It's pretty cool. We were invited to a tea for someone who loves the Andy Griffith Show just outside of downtown. So this cool old truck, this beautiful old house. It's kind of our first moment of learning how far out of our depths we were. When a guy walked up to me and said, I'm Asa, as if I was supposed to know what that meant. He's a character actor who portrays them. Right up the road was the Mount Airy Granite Quarry, the largest outdoor open granite quarry in the world. And the Derby Restaurant, a great meat in three places. I got country style steak there. You can see in 1937 what the prices were like. A little bit more expensive now, but service was great. People were nice. It's a pretty cool old place to go. And then we went to the Dairy Center. That's right, the Dairy Center. Not left, not right, but center. <laughs> it's a great place for a corn dog and an onion ring. Don't forget the Pepsi. You're in North Carolina. That's Pepsi country. Pepsi was actually invented in New Bern, North Carolina, for those of you who didn't know that. 
then we're back out at the Mayberry Motor Inn to the contest for the character lookalikes. So I'm here at the uh, Mayberry Motor Inn in Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is the home town of Andy Griffith and is uh, inspiration for Mayberry and the Andy Griffith show. Not Griffin, get yourself killed around here if you say it that way. Griffith. So we're here for the Mayberry Meetup. Every year in September, we have about 10,000 people come to Mayberry Days. This is a smaller gathering, about 150 people, I guess, who uh, meet up for a weekend to do all things Mayberry. Been a really interesting experience. Great people. And I didn't know that this many 1960 to 1965 Ford Galaxy 500s existed, but they're all over the place. So, anyway, it's been a lot of fun. I'll leave it in the morning, but Mayberry lives. So, do you know what bus Goober got off of in episode 103? I didn't think so. So Sunday morning came and it was time to move on. We had had enough of Mayberry meetup. And we decided to go find out where the real Mayberry was. Turns out that Andy Griffith's parents were from a small farm community called Mayberry, Virginia. It's about 35 minutes north of Mount Airy, North Carolina, just over the state line. We decided to go check it out. We had seen a movie called Mayberry Man, which actually was quite good. And in it, there's this store, the Mayberry Trading Post. And we found out it was a real place and was only a few miles up the road. We had to go see it. It was a beautiful drive up into Virginia. And it was quiet. And it was cool. It was wonderful found all these little white churches, overlooks. Seems like everywhere we turned there was some beautiful thing, this field of flowers next to the cornfield on the side of the road was just stunning. We kept stopping. Finally we crossed Mayberry Creek on the Blue Ridge Parkway and knew we were getting close to the real Mayberry. Turns out Andy Griffith really struggled with Mount Airy. After he became famous, they made life very difficult for his parents, and he moved them out of the only home they ever owned, out to a house in California that he bought for them, but they were never happy, and his dad died shortly after that. This is where Andy Griffith is really from, Mayberry, Virginia. See the sign from Mayberry Church. It's just right up the road, but here at this crossroad is the Mayberry Trading Post. And there has been a store at this crossroad since 1858. This is actually the second store. It was built in 1892. Now you know, notice Snuffy and Wheezy on the doors of the men's and the ladies' room. It's a much later addition. It goes back to the 1950s when they finally got running water into the store. And not many people today even remember those characters from the Sunday comics like I do. But there's Victor open up the store Sunday morning around 9.30 and we went in and it's really more like a museum on the inside. It's filled with all kind of relics from a far bygone era. They exist off of tourism now because they are literally right off of the Blue Ridge Parkway. And if you ever get a chance to stop in, I highly recommend hanging out for just a little while at the Mayberry Trading Post. We found ourselves talking to Victor for a long time. This is the original post office established in 1892 called the Mayberry Post Office. And the names are the same. The calendars date back way back at the 1940. 
And outside is Victor's Willis Jeep. I just had to get some pictures of this because you don't see these every day. This is a real Jeep. Mayberry Church, the Presbyterian Church, just right up the road. We drove past it, but they had services, so I didn't want to get out and video it. And then we hit the Blue Ridge Parkway, headed south a little bit, found ourselves at Groundhog Mountain. It's a beautiful spot. And this is what Mayberry actually looked like in 1892. All of that new forest, it's new. It was all cleared. It was all farmland for as far as the eye can see. But here at the Blue Ridge Parkway is fantastic. Then we pass this old cabin from Orlina Puckett, who was a midwife. She lost 24 children of her own, but helped give birth to over a thousand in the area, lived to be 102 years old. This is what traveling is all about. This is discovery. Well, we're here at uh, what's left of Ghost Town in the Sky in Maggie Valley. This is a place I always wanted to come when I was a kid. My dad would drive us up to Cherokee, North Carolina on a pretty regular basis. We kind of cruise the gift shops, turn around and go back. Always saw the signs for Ghost Town in the Sky. It looked so cool. Finally, we got to be old enough. Jamie and I came up here only to find out that it's been shut down for a long time. There's been a lot of talk over the years of trying to revive it, bring it back. Still hadn't happened, but it's kind of our uh, tradition now to have a picnic in the parking lot, dream about how cool it would have been to see gunfights in the streets, eat cotton candy, walking along a western town on the top of the mountain in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Maybe someday. Or I'll just remain a ghost. So the talk that we've understood is that there's actually a guy who owns the property of Ghost Town in the Sky trying to reopen it, but the mayor of Maggie Valley wants to turn Maggie Valley into a retirement home. And so there's politics involved. It's too bad. Anyway, right down the street we found this cool little park where I stopped. We had lunch. I enjoyed this flowers and this tree I believe is a dawn redwood it looks a lot like my bonsai that I grew from seed I'll show you pictures someday but I just thought it was a beautiful tree and I wanted to show that off a little bit Maggie Valley is this cool little place uh, it's just about three miles strip there's not a whole lot going on there's a lot of old motels like the Cardinal Inn that we've stayed in several times now and just really love it's clean comfortable it's quiet and again reminds us of our childhood we woke up on Monday morning the sky was partly cloudy but it was a beautiful day we got ready to go
So we left Maggie Valley and made our way down to Cherokee, North Carolina. Driving down the main streets, always a, a memory for me, although this time there were no bears in cages, no Cherokee dressed up like Plains Indians in feathered headdresses and beating on tom-toms that the Cherokee didn't do. I didn't know that as a kid, though, of course. It was just Indians for me. So we had a little bit of time to kill, so we went to the Oconalofti River, which is a beautiful spot. And then we turned, headed back up to our final destination. So in 2021, we had tried to go to Santa's land for Jamie's birthday. And even though the website said they were open during the week, we got there and they were closed because they didn't have enough people to work the park. When we got here, we actually noticed that about 92% of the workers were all senior citizens. There are very few young people there. But we got in so we could check this one off the list of kitschy old theme parks that we wanted to visit. And I have to say, Santa was great. I did really appreciate the fact that they acknowledged that Jesus Christ is what Christmas is all about. They have the cool chapel, and then they also had the very cool nativity scene set up. Although I don't know how many people go and look at it, it being on the other side of the train tracks and all, but still, it was there, and we really appreciated that. Of course, the Easter Bunny is there too. I, I assume this is the Easter Bunny. Maybe it's just a giant rabbit with a weird look on his face, I don't know. And there's the Eskimo with a black eye and the missing tooth. Not sure what that's about, but this whole area is for kids to climb on. Then there's the zoo. And they have these cute black bear cubs, which were a lot of fun to watch. They also had, you know, ducks, they had a fox, they had porcupines, uh, they had uh, some kind of cat that smelled strongly of cat and of course a camel. You can't have Christmas without a camel and of course you certainly can't have Christmas without a reindeer. So there he is. I don't know if that's young Donner or young Blitzen. It's not Rudolph. His nose isn't red. I can tell you that the enclosure was pretty strong smelling. Then it was on to the Rockin' Rudy roller coaster. Don't want to miss this one. Alright, here we go. Yes, the stop was as violent as it looked, and they actually take you around twice. When we came out of there, we walked into the kids' section with all the cool rides, and we realized that our grandchildren would love this place. Notice the no smoking sign on the tree. It's a, it's a common theme throughout the park. It reminded me of my childhood back in the 60s and early 70s when people smoked everywhere. I don't know if they put those up because people in North Carolina still smoke everywhere or if they're just old signs that remind us that this is a park that was built in 1966 and it still has the feel of the late 60s, early 70s about it. That'd be another fun reason to take it, your grandkids to it because you could show them this is what fun was like when I was a kid. 
back when I was a kid. <laughs> of course, they've got the fair rides, the boats, the trucks, the cars, the helicopters, and the Ferris wheel. We were going to go out on the paddle boat, but it was a bit hot to ride around in a murky pond, and we didn't see any lemurs in the cages, so we didn't see any reason to break a sweat as we were enjoying Santa's land so much. And then there are these cool 60s animatronics. Dickens would be so proud. I did think the foxes cleaning Santa's costume were really cute. And again, these were all made in the 60s, just like this sign. Food, drinks, cigarettes outside, please. Well, our day was complete and we made our way out of Santa's land, having finally experienced it, making plans for the future. There is one for the bucket list. We have made it to Santa's land. We have experienced everything there is to experience, except the train that wasn't running this morning. Maybe we'll have to come back and do that. But the kids would love it. It actually is a really cool, little old fashioned park. Started in 1966, but I've driven past many times and my dad never would stop. So dad finally made it to Santa's land. And the vacation's about over. Been a wild one. See you later. Well, greetings, fellow travelers, and welcome again to another exciting adventure with the Eclectic Monk. I sure hope you're enjoying these videos, and I hope that you'll take the moment to like them, to subscribe to the channel, to share these on social media and share it with your friends just by word of mouth. And what would really help me out is if you'd leave me a comment. Also, if you'd like to know more about what I'm doing, enjoy my podcast, check on my online store, different things, check out theeclecticmonk.com. And there, You'll find all kind of other content and connections to other things that I've been doing for, I don't know, years. Anyway, I really do appreciate your support, and I hope that you'll continue to travel well with me. Till next time, God bless.